I'm Bianca and I'm Amanda and, and welcome, welcome back, back to, to making, making the grade. grade in case you forgot we are seven seniors who put together a show to keep you updated on what's going on in SBHS let's jump right into the second episode Without you. oftentimes theater is portrayed negatively especially in high school in this video we'll be breaking that stereotype and showing how beautiful it really is that's me on the left Denari. and that's me on the right Luna now let's, let's get, get right, right into, into the, the show. show. Hi, my name is Mrs. Schrader. I'm the director for Pirandello Players. Hi, my name is Eric Soltis and I play Juror 10. Hi, I'm Juliana Diaz. I'm playing Juror 2. Hi, I'm Omni. I'm a junior and I'm stage managing for Pirandello. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bufus. I am the creative director for Pirandello Players. Hi, I'm Alyssa. I'm a junior and I'm in charge of sound for Pirandello. Hi, my name is Will Barglow and I'm a part of the backstage crew. It was first performed as a movie. It's about 12 jurors in a murder case of a young boy who killed his father. So the jurors have to decide whether the kid is guilty or innocent. Before we dive into this year, let's take a step back into the virtual world. Some challenges I'm putting on a Zoom production was being confined to a chair. I wasn't able to move around like I normally am on stage. Um, instead of building and designing sets, we looked for virtual backgrounds. Um, we had to edit like a movie, so it was a totally different feel. It was a lot more just like clicking uh, buttons for sounds and a lot more like sitting and not as like up and active as we normally are. It was hard for people to do their normal jobs because everything was different, like there was no sound machine for me to do. So I had to take notes, which is something that I'm not used to, so we all had to adapt. I am so excited for live theater to be back. It is such a different experience to be here in person. That's what draws people in. That's what drew me in as a child. It's completely different and it's exhilarating and there's something about the energy and the aura. The backstage crew is a crucial part because we do everything behind the scenes. We build all the sets, we make all the magic happen, we make the play look real and realistic and pleasant to the eye for the audience. Um, without sets, you don't know the placement of where everything is kind of happening. Directing is super important for the play because the actors have a lot of questions all the time, like down to the color of their socks. And when you're directing, you always need to have all the answers. But the microphones are so important because we need to hear the actors, especially with the masks, because their voices are so muffled. It's so important to hear them and hear everything they have to say. And also the sound effects just add a little bit to the show, like just a creak of a door. You get a little more feel for the suspense. I would say there are a few things that make our high school drama or play important. This is an opportunity for students to explore themselves, but also to figure out where their talents are. Theater and drama has always been a place where so many different types of students can come together and join a family. So what theater means to me is like friendship and bonding. Um, I've done theater since I was as young as I can remember, and I made all of my friends at Pirandello, um, and those are probably going to be my friends for the rest of my life. Theater's always been an important part of my life. My friends kind of brought me into it, and like the sense of community that you form with the people backstage, and like going through problems when somebody messes up a line, like trying to work together to fix it. It's just always been fun. Uh, theater's really important to me. I grew up in high school in musical theater, doing all the plays, also working on sets as well. And it's a place for kids to go to express themselves. And it becomes a little family. It's just a great expression of um, emotions and feeling and being silly and having, having fun. So it's a, it's a great release. Directing not just the play, but directing Pirandello players in general, it's literally a dream come true for me. 
Theater has always been a second home, a place that I found refuge, a place that I went to to get outside of my own head, to be creative, to be something that I wasn't. People should come because we all really need to learn how to support our peers and not many people know but Pirandello does struggle financially and we want to try the best we can but we're getting all of the hand-me-downs. You can see all of our hard work, it's very entertaining, we have a lot of talented people and actors and you can see all the sets that we make behind the stage. I definitely feel like our school is super sports-centered and appreciating another aspect of our school like the arts is super important especially since we spend months perfecting our show. I think point blank the show is just really entertaining to watch and that's coming from someone who sits in a booth and watches it over and over again. It has to be entertaining to gauge my interests and this one actually is. This year our play more than any other we've done in the past really talks about current social issues and I think it's just a really important message for people to see. We still have people who judge others based on race, based on um, socioeconomic status, based on who they are, based on what they wear, based on a whole bunch of things. This play sheds light on that topic. After interviewing the cast members, it really made me want to watch their performance. The time and dedication it takes to organize such a beautiful piece of work deserves so much more attention. Hope to see you at the play. Wow, catch me at that play. Be on the lookout for tickets. Come support the Pirandello players starting January 13th. Strength and conditioning is a huge part of every athlete's life here at SBHS. Making the Grady Theater show you the true environment of the program and how to utilize this resource even if you don't play a sport. This is the South Brunswick High School weight room. Here, student athletes and students alike can work on themselves both mentally and physically. I'm Amanda. And I'm Tori. And we're here to take you inside the strength and conditioning program. Hi, I'm Mr. O, and I'm the head of the strength and conditioning program here at South Brunswick High School. I'm Coach Webb. I help run the strength and conditioning program with Coach Ostrowski. Hi, my name is Danny Strickland and I coach boys basketball at South Brunswick High School. My name is Coach Bravo and I coach girls soccer and girls lacrosse. I'm Coach Ball and I coach uh, field hockey in the fall, ice hockey in the winter, and boys volleyball in the spring. I'm Mr. Edwards. I coach the freshman boys basketball team and the varsity girls lacrosse team. My name is Phil Chicoma and I play baseball. My name is Brandon Lee and I play basketball. My name is Casey Jarvis, I'm on the dance team. My name is Dylan Amin and I play baseball. My name is Liz Mullen and I play softball and field hockey. I can't remember how long ago it was that I took over the program, um, but since I took it over, when I first started I kind of took the framework that the person before me had because they left kind of like a mid-season. And since then the program has grown and changed, I would say every season. Over the past three or so years, I've been collaborating with uh, Coach Ostrowski to make the best program possible for the kids that come out every day. Uh, I've adapted just the, the structure of how we do things. I've adapted the, the exercises and things that we do. Um, I went from kind of like, hey, I'm figuring this out to, all right, this is kind of the direction I want to take it. Yes, we require all of our basketball players to attend strength and conditioning because we feel it gives them the best opportunity to work together in the offseason towards our goal for the next season. It's highly suggested. We put the schedule out to all of them. Uh, I'm hopeful they attend, but it's not a requirement. They don't have to attend in order to try out the team. Required? No. But it's highly recommended that you should attend. My favorite part about being an instructor is helping the kids out, learning how to move correctly, gaining strength, of course, and end up building a nice atmosphere in the weight room. One of my favorite parts is seeing the progress that students make. Some kids just come in, they have no clue what it is. They've never been in a weight room before. Maybe it's them just getting better at one exercise that they do with their body weight, or maybe it's a student coming in with some experience, but then they're making strength gains and they, they buy into the process. I benefited from going to strength and conditioning by getting in shape before the season starts and bonding with my teammates. From going to strength and conditioning, I've benefited by getting a lot stronger and improving my forms of the deadlift and squat. I've benefited from strength and conditioning by staying in shape in the off season so it's easier to ease into the actual season. One thing that uh, students should know about strength and conditioning is that you don't have to be an athlete to come and join. I would probably want them to know that if you stay committed to a program like this, 
what you get out of it isn't just the physical benefits from participating in the program, but it's the other um, kind of unwritten things. Um, hard work, um, becoming part of a team, relying on other people, pushing yourself, knowing your limits, and, and, and really finding out what you're capable of. I would say to me, that's probably the, the most important thing I want them to take out. I believe it's beneficial for athletes to attend strength and conditioning both pre and post season because it gives you a chance to work on your strengths as well as your weaknesses and get the type of coaching that you need in the weight room. It's beneficial to work those muscle groups and strengthen those muscle groups that you use on the field. It's, it's a different type of training. Uh, you are using these different muscle groups through movement of whatever different sport, but you're not exactly strengthening them. And it's the strengthening that's going to make you a little bit faster, jump a little bit higher, so on and so forth. Uh, it's important to go. Um, any season where you're not playing another sport, it can just help you prepare for the upcoming season or it can help you improve your fitness, maintain your fitness levels. You also get to spend time with your teammates um, instead of going to a, you know, a private club or a gym or private training. You get to spend time with your teammates and have that character building and that camaraderie that you don't get somewhere else. Going to strength conditioning allows me to bond with my teammates a lot more and I can actually gain more progress. I like the planned out workouts. When I go to the gym, I don't really know what I'm doing, but this way I know a proper workout. I choose to go to strength and conditioning after school instead of going to the gym because I don't have a ride to the gym and it's also free. The environment of strength and conditioning motivates me to put effort into my workout by being around my peers and teammates and everyone encouraging each other to get better. Being around my teammates and working out next to them motivates me to push myself harder. Coaches always know when their players have gone to strength and conditioning versus the ones who have not. They're not as conditioned, um, they're more fatigued, they might not be as strong as some of the other players that have been going to strength and conditioning. In the beginning of the season, those are the players who are more prepared. They're in better shape, they're ready to go. Um, they've also got a little bit of a, um, a, that team building aspect where they get along better with their teammates. The, everybody knows each other a little bit better and they just have routines down that are a little bit better than if they were doing things on their own. Choosing the strength and conditioning program here at South Brunswick is free. It's free for athletes, it's free for students. You don't even need to be a member of an athletic team to participate in this program. Anybody can join, it's free. You get one-on-one -on -one coaching for the most part. You have coaches in here that are gonna help you with your technique. You don't get that at a gym. That you just pay a membership and you kind of got to figure it out unless you're paying even more for a personal trainer. So a free program where you get essentially a free trainer, I don't know, I think that's a win-win. Now that you've taken a look inside, we hope that you can take advantage of this amazing resource at SBHS. After that information, we hope you can find a friend and work out with them at Strength and Conditioning. Getting buff can't be too hard with Mr. O and Mr. Webb helping you out. Being that SBHS is so diverse, there are many different cultures, religions, and traditions that are celebrated. Our last package covers the different holidays embraced by our fellow students. Jackie, what are you doing over break? Just spend time with family. How about you? I'll probably spend time with family and catch up on some sleep. That's good. I wonder what everybody else is doing. Well, we interviewed staff and students to get an inside look. Check it out. My name's Lena Koiwa, and I do not celebrate anything over the winter break. My name is Denari Savimpante, and I celebrate Kwanzaa. My name is... Tori Cohen, and I celebrate Hanukkah. Hi, my name is Brandon Lee, and I'm a senior, and I celebrate Christmas. Hi, my name is Athena, and over the break, I'll be celebrating Kwanzaa. My name is Andrew, and I celebrate Hanukkah. My name is Daniel Strickland, and I celebrate Christmas. Although I don't celebrate Christmas or anything, I do like the peppermint mocha from Starbucks. Um, so on Hanukkah, you can make a, a lot of different foods. They, the main thing is that they're fried in oil. But my favorite thing on Hanukkah is probably latkes. Um, my mom makes really good ones, and so does my grandma. Um, favorite food to eat? Just basically anything my aunts make. Like, they make like curry chicken, or just their beans and rice to die for, like anything basically. Um, I like making pies, and my favorite pie to make is um, blueberry pie, so that's what I make during the holidays. My favorite thing to eat on the holidays is potato latkes. Um, they are shredded potatoes with um, onion and seasoning and they're fried and they're delicious. I did receive a couple of gifts like when I was little, but as, as I got older I didn't really get any more gifts. But when I was little I did really like my 3DS 
So when I was in like sixth grade, I got a hoverboard from my neighbor because he bought it for his children, but they were too old for it. So that was just like the best thing I've ever gotten. My favorite gift this year was my new wood laser. I made, I made with my new wood laser earrings for all of our Hanukkah guests. And for traditions, like at the end of the seven day celebration, we have like um, a feast. Oh, so say a feast sounds more fancy than we just have a big dinner. And on the last day, we like give out zawadis, which means gifts. During the holiday season, Hanukkah is like a different time every year because it follows the Jewish calendar. So whenever it's Hanukkah, we always light the menorah and we put out dreidels and we have like a few Hanukkah signs that I've had since I was a baby. And we put out a bunch of menorahs even though we only light one. Um, some traditions, I make gingerbread houses with my siblings, I make cookies, and I make candy yams. Um, yes, we do decorate the house even though we don't celebrate. We put up Christmas trees and we decorate it with like ornaments and lights and it's just kind of there for aesthetics rather than for the holidays. We put up, uh, well, a menorah. We light the menorah, both candles and electric. And we also hang up um, other Hanukkah decorations. Something my mom does is because like everybody always has a, a tree up in their house. She like instead of doing a Christmas tree, she does a Kwanzaa tree, and she like puts all like Kwanzaa decorations around the tree and like has like Kwanzaa wrapped around it. And then that's where she puts the zawadis, and the zawadis are the gifts which we get on the seventh day. So the decorations that we put up on Christmas, we, the normal Christmas tree lights around the house and outside. That's really it. Yeah. So the gathering is called the um, the Kwanzaa Karamu. And we um we used to throw like a big big party with like inviting like family friends a whole bunch of different people but we haven't done that in a while because like COVID and everything but normally the caramel is the last day and that's when we like eat dinner with the family where we have like uh, we give gifts we dance we give thanks to our ancestors and we do the final principle on the seventh day. So there are many nights of Hanukkah so we're able to have like multiple different guests over each night so one night we do. Um, just family. Most of the time on the first night of Hanukkah, my grandparents will come over. Um, we light the menorah, we say the prayers. Um, but usually for each of the eight nights, I have like my different friends come over because none of my friends are really Jewish. So it's good for them to experience the holiday and light the menorah and hear me say the prayers and stuff like that. So it's like a huge range of people that come over because we have eight nights. We usually attends my family gathering. So it's my main family, so my parents and my two siblings and then my aunt, uncle, and my grandma. I have my cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends, um, my siblings, nieces, nephews, and we normally we dance at the party, music going, we do family bingo, game night, all sorts of stuff. Wow, it's so interesting what people are doing during the holidays. Yeah, it's so cool how we all have our own ideas jingle of what bells, the holidays look like. Jingle bells, jingle bells, You heard that, Jackie? You heard it? Yeah, I did. That's my favorite Christmas song. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite too. Well, I hope you all enjoy the winter break. Happy, Happy holidays! holidays. Amanda, you turning up during break? You already heard, I'll be hanging out with friends and family. Yeah, I'll be with you. Oh yeah, right. Well, that's all for the second episode. Comment down below your favorite package. Be on the lookout for episode three, and until then, I'm Bianca. And I'm Amanda. Have, Have a, a good, good break. break.